Welcome gamers to episode four of this Let's Play series of Dune Spice Wars. Uh, this, uh, I should just point out at the start that this uh, series is sponsored by Shiro Games, the developer of Dune Spice Wars, so thank you for that. Also, if you are concerned at all about my objectivity, then just be aware that that is the case. I'm more doing a Let's Play anyway, but I am really enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying how the, uh, how the, I guess how the intricacies have sort of just been sort of unfolding as the game develops and there's so many different aspects of the game like you've got your traders market which has got its own sort of share system we did that one in the last episode uh, we've got uh, for example the imperium tax that we need to do where we need to sort of keep the spice flowing uh, we've got uh, all sorts of other things we've got over through here uh, you know the 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 uh, research tree which is sort of divided up into four different sections sort of more sort of like the land sort of style of things more local arrakis style uh, developments military back on through here and then actually production back up this other way so you can certainly really change your direction of where you're going with the game based on all these different things it's sort of it's one of these games where it, it makes such a big difference depending on the other aspects that come into play uh, other things that we have got in through here is the Landstrad Council. We've put our votes up already, and we sort of did this in the last episode, just sort of agonised over whether to to, um, to put more votes in here or to actually take the hit of the 30, um, the 30 uh, Landstrad standing, just to put the others into a low trajectory. If we have a look over through here with the Landstrad standing, if we lost 30, we'd still be in medium, but the others would then drop into low, like Harkonnen is on 210. Atreides will get plus 10 at the next council, but they'll also then drop down below into the, into the, lo the low areas. And I'm sort of still tempted to, I'm supporting this, this, but I'm only supporting it by 10 votes. Um, and this, this is one that the uh, minor houses do. We do get plus 10 land strat standings simply by supporting this particular option. So we do want to go that way anyway. Uh, right, well, that's what we've got there. Um, now, I think that this will probably fail based on what Harkonnen and Atreides will do, but we'll see what actually happens with that one. Um, anyway, that's the Landstrat Council. We also have agents, which are sort of uh, heavily involved now. We do actually have an agent which is trying to get information about ha House Harkonnen. And so we're just slowly sort of moving our way through to uh, get intel on House Harkonnen. Actually, how much intel can we have? Up to a 1,000. Okay, we're not getting close yet to our limits with what we have to sort of then go and deal with. So we'll sort of just um, allow that to do what it's doing. Um, yeah, I won't go. I've, been, I've gone into detail with this in other episodes, so just be aware of that. Also, if you are wanting to sort of get an understanding of the lore of Dune, because this game really does model it very, very well. Uh, episode zero, I do spend a fair bit of time at the back end of that that very, very first video, just going through how these, how everything sort of interplays and intertwines. Um, now, the thing we're going to have a look at in here was with House Ikaz. Let's just go and have a bit of a look at the actual house itself. We can see what the other house bonuses are, by the way, by clicking onto these different areas. So all I did there was just go up and click on on the uh, on the main slot, and so your your team will then come up. It then gives you a summary. Like we've got uh, 4.7 hegemony. When we get to 5,000, this is actually going to be a big, big milestone. We should get that this episode, uh, hopefully, if we can get the spice running again. And uh, so you can see down through there, the hegemony is really how you win the game. And so we are sort of now moving forward. The Fremen are up there as well with House Harkonnen, but we're we're a fair way out in, in advance of that one right now. Um, now, the faction bonuses. Surrounded neutral villages become a sanctuary that cannot be attacked by other factions. So gain one authority production per sanctuary. Villages adjacent to a sanctuary gain plus one instance of the villagers' traits. So I did actually test this. This is actually fairly cool. We can do it with one of our villages right now. And so we'll actually go and have a look at that one. Let's just go and, uh, and I'll just press the M key and have a bit of a look out. Now, if I select this area through here, you can see there that this particular village is completely surrounded like it's either not the game map or it's surrounded by these other areas i'm also not sure what happens if we claim this and i'm just assuming that's uh, that's actually all part of the one big region i'm thinking if we claim this this area and this area that we may actually end up claiming that one as well which we means us, we can then do more more things if i just go back and press the m key again so the only one that we really have that's completely surrounded is uh, is this one in here now i don't want to 
do this, but I will be wanting to do it with some potentially some other factions or some other areas ultimately. Uh, it wouldn't be bad to do that. Like these are just too important to us. This one here, for example, if I, t if I claim these two, we could do it with this one and change that into a sanctuary. So how do we do that? Uh, like it's not really viable to just go out and start to uh, attack in a loop to try to then surround it. Like I could have actually gone and attacked there, then there, and sort of got them that way. Now that's probably still viable to do it this way if you're sort of planning ahead. But in, in our instance, what we want to do is we want to just come through and essentially just, well, in this, this is the only option we have at this point in time to change this controlled location into an actual sanctuary. So what we do here is we abandon it. Now, when we abandon the village, we get back 175 plascrete and four water. So we get back a little bit of that one. We'll just confirm that one. If you do, I think it's Sansa. If you choose Sansa as your other character that you come in with or it's one of the characters you come in with i think you can do this this operation and get back the authority as well or a portion of the authority which then means you can just keep on uh, expanding quickly by creating these sanctuary villages so if we confirm this it then becomes like it's no longer under our control but it is surrounded by our territory uh, so if we now have a look at it, we can now sort of see that this is actually a, um, it's got organized supply. We're not seeing anything else. Let's just unpause the game for a second. So the militia is now setting up. And now we see there's a new thing in through here. This is now an actual sanctuary. And so the sanctuary then has, uh, cannot be attacked by other factions. So nobody can attack this. It's sort of almost like it means we don't have to think about it. But the benefit of it is uh, we gain plus one authority production. So our authority went from six to seven. You can see there we've got plus one coming from the sanctuary. Uh, I don't know what happens if we have multiple, like if, there, if there's multiple, I don't know if that would work. I'll have to test that as well at some point. Anyway, this is, um, but we get the plus one authority as well. But the big thing is, is that villages and the region and its neighbors gain plus one instance of the villagers' traits. I thought it was these traits that got actually uh, put across, but it's not. What it is, is if we go, to, for example, to this village in through here, if I can cl click on it, we then see we're getting a times two in through this other side. So we're getting, uh, we're getting double what we ended up having through there. So we can actually now, by doing this one, for example, we have a plus one research hub limit and we get a 20% research hub resource production at this location. By having this sanctuary, we then double, we get an extra one in through here. So we've got times two. So we don't just have plus one, we have plus two research hubs we can build in here now. So we can make this into an absolute research um, you know, beast if we, if we wanted to, which is sort of worth thinking about. Uh, those sorts of things. I mean, not that I want to do that with this particular location. That's going to then impact other things as well when we do this. But all of these then get double what their other production was. So, you know, plus 30% agent recruitment speed will now be faster. Uh, we get extra recruitment officers. So really, it's only these two here that then get, get um, the benefit of that. But that's sort of how this then works. So it allows you uh, in a fairly intricate way to be able to maximize like if, if I've got, for example, this uh, Plascrete location here, which would be you know, a very, very valuable location for Plascrete, uh, if I go and click on the actual village itself. And so the, uh, the Plascrete uh, foundries in through this side, I've got uh, two Plascrete foundries that produce 24 each. I'd then be able to, if, if that one there was a sanctuary, I'd then be able to change this one across and end up getting um, getting even more. You know, I'd be able to sort of add another another Plascrete factory in there, plus get other bonuses. So it's not really viable doing it to this one here where I'm only getting two locations adapted that way, but for other locations, I think we'll keep an eye open for this because it is really quite uh, quite strong. Anyway, I'm not going to be doing that one, so I'm just going to go back and um, and pick up my save game. But that is ultimately the um, you know the the way to play as House of Kaz. Um, like it's probably it, we're too early into the game at this at this point in time. Let's just let the game run forward. Just going to wait for this land strike council to vote. Uh, nearly up to a thousand. I can pick this one up. I'm almost tempted to do this one, promising politician, but it's going to chew up all of my salary, which I don't want to really lose. Okay, we've now got the harvester is now is now done, so we're just going to go and quickly go and uh, we're going to. I mustn't have. I must. I must have. Mustn't have actually clicked on the auto recall. It's very important that we do that, uh, and I'm going to go and add in another crew member as well. 
So I'm just going to go and we need to get the spice flowing yet again. Now we do have another spice location here, which the um, which the other like the Fremen faction is actually using. So we may have to uh, sort of uh, take over that at some point. So we're now back to mining the spice again. We've got enough for this next contract. It's the or next next taxation, but it's the one after that that is the uh, potentially the, the problem. So we have to be careful here. Now our uh, manpower is okay. This is all okay. We've got a lot of plascrete, so we can start to uh, possibly. We're now over one thousand. Is there anything in here that we now want to get? So we now can, if we wanted to, spend this. But I think we'll just keep on building up our our villages and just getting the basic economy uh, sorted. Uh, if we have a quick look down into here, um, yeah, wind trap processing plant uh, what do we end up in through here plus one plus create factory limit which we don't really need and then we have plus two intelligence uh, two, two intel production in the villages at least one building of each type I don't think I'm going to aim for that in this instance I think I'm happy enough to just keep that one doing what it's doing uh, back over here we are building that one still so we'll let that one continue this one here, it's now 200 to get the next uh, building slot back in there. Actually, one thing we do want to do in here is to build a um, to build an airfield, and probably here actually more than anywhere. So what do we have here? So plus two intel, yeah, when the village is at least one building of each type, and uh, bartering customs, so plus three solari per economy building. Now we've got three of them at this stage. Yeah, so... Um, Let's go and spend 200 on this on this one in here. And this looks like it's now the the end of it. This is, takes up two slots. So back in here, um, we now really are at the back end of what we can then go and get. The maintenance center, I won't worry about that here. I'll probably get that one a bit further out. And I really, I'm just going to have to choose something. So I've got the recruitment office. I do actually have the military base. This is 20% uh, 20 power to ally military units in the region and its neighbours. That would be okay. But I think I'm going to go with the airfield. So ground military units can embark and disembark from shuttles within the airfield's range. So it's a fairly big range. But um, that will sort of take me... So I'm going to get a little bit near towards the outpost. Yeah, we can just walk out to that one there. Let's just go and build it here. All right, so that's going to cost me five upkeep on that one there. Just see what else we can build in here. So we've got the recruitment office. I can build another recruitment office, but I don't need to do that one just yet. Um... Yeah, plus one recruitment office here. Yeah. So it's sort of, again, it's not really something that I need to worry about. It's only got wind strength of four. What else do we have? Now we've got a point of interest has now been investigated. So we'll resolve this one and get our reward. So we've now got ourselves a, uh, a Fremen mercenary. And um, this one is uh, it's a hiling, so unit will never recover health. Uh, unit has been hired to do a job. So this one here, I'll just move this one back. It's got 18 attack power, so it's very, very strong. I don't, know if it, I don't think it chewed up any of these either. Just move these across. We're doing quite well at this stage. Um, so the Fremen Mercenary there. What else have we got? Construction complete down in here now. So we've now got the processing plant. Uh, we wanted to... That's the only one we can get there. So that's going to give us a bit more of a boost to our Solari. I might grab the market as well. So we'll just build that one in there. And we have this one now. Hmm, what are we going to build? This is one where 
I've got to figure out now whether to go with the uh, with having this as my military or economy, and then this one is the military or economy. So we've got two different choices in here. We have a quick look at the buildings available to us. The only ones we have available at the moment are the uh, recruitment centre. So it's going to cost me a thousand of the Solari. Uh, we do get 30% manpower production and 30% maximum manpower, which is not critical at this stage. It will be later on, but not right now. Then we've got the administrative hall. So we get plus three Solari production in villages and plus 30% authority production, which is actually really, really quite valuable. So do we want three of these buildings or two of these buildings? So if we have a look at back, this is the charm branch. So we get a, a plus 0.8 spice exchange rate when the base exchange rate is at least 2.2. Um, and we get uh, 300 maximum spice. We can sort of store more spice in our stockpile. Not critical at this stage. Uh, the Mason's Guild, we get plus 20%. I don't need that either, really. The harvester works, so plus 5% harvesters. So I think we put this in the two and put this one in the three. Let's go to the two and use this one here, which is valuable. Let's just go and start the process here just to get the extra Solari. So we'll get that one built. Got a little bit of Solari. We are building it up fairly fast, but we're going to lose it very, very quickly now. <laughs> one day left for the vote to go, then go in. Let's get back to the map. Sort of see a lot of things happening. Now, we haven't really come across the others so much just yet. slowly expanding okay then we've got the, the votes and you can see there we're now going at negative 12 uh, so we now have to change things around a little bit to uh, try to sort of uh, get over the top of this of this shortfall that we actually have we do actually have good plascrete production which is important for us uh, okay how do we go so we do end up getting we do. We've, we've got back up to 1.7 because of the uh, because of the results of this one in through here. So the results were that pretty much everyone voted for it. Uh, in, in fact, we only just made it. If we hadn't have put the 80 in there, that wouldn't have gone through. The minor houses uh, that are off the planet would have actually voted against it. <laughs> so we only just sort of just squeaked in there because of uh, our fear. Uh, now the, decl the declining one actually did actually decline. It's, that's interesting as well. Uh, we put in um, yeah, we actually supported it with 10. Uh, the Fremen also supported that one as well because it doesn't impact them and some of the minor houses, but it was mainly like uh, um, House Atreides and House Harkonnen. Even if we had to put everything into that one, actually we we could have forced that one, but it did, doesn't really matter that much. We're now over to the 250 mark as well, I've just noticed. This then does give us a nice big boost actually I'm just looking at this one we, we got certainly got this one in through here so everyone supported that one except for the Fremen and of course it doesn't really worry about they don't worry too much about the uh, the Landstrad standing because the Fremen are just based on the actual planet itself so when we look at that one down the bottom there 71 minor houses and 20 Fremen votes went into declining this particular vote Again, it's interesting the mix of forces that you're fighting on the actual map as well will actually have a, have a bearing on, on what does go on Okay, so that is uh, that is cool, but we have now lost all of our tax uh, benefits. So we are now a little bit behind with this. We're picking up our authority really nice and quickly. So let's just pause for a second, have another quick plan around as to what we're going to do next. Um, this one here is going to cost me 109. That one there is going to cost me 95. But this one's got the spice. And even though we think the Fremen are in there, um, mining this one, I need to get this one under my control. Uh, now we do actually have, I might choose this one and just get that one under control as well. Just press M again and just have a bit of a look. How much will this one cost us? 98. And that one. That one's um, 100 up there at Lamoise. Uh, again, that would be good for Solari production. And if we have a look at Sanlon, 
can build the wholesale market. I think I might just grab that one now at that location. And this one here, I'm going to go and pick up another uh, location there and also then give it a wholesale market just so we can start to overcome this negative 12. That will be important. Someone's now building away. How much is there in here? Only three militia. So we need to get over 100. So we, we're getting up there pretty fast at the moment. So things are sort of working fairly well. This is now a problem. Um, you can sort of see that it's starting to sort of get up into the red. We do need to really keep this one going. And we can't really sort of push. We're going 50-50 with selling off to the... Uh, off to the traders as well as to a stockpile ready for the uh, for paying the imperial tax. We completed the construction down through here and we've now got development research as well. So the national mythos has now come through. We've now we can actually now pick up a war banner unit. Inspiring standards. A war banner has produced two manpower uh, non-mechanical units in the same region as the at least one war banner generate health 100% faster. We don't need that one critically. This one here will give us uh, plus five command points, which again, we don't need critically. Army logistics unlocks the barracks building in the advanced outpost. I think I might go back to a few of the others. We've got native artists. Um, now there is a siege in, in, a, in a neighboring territory. We will, we will eventually need that one. Plus one militia slot. Yeah, we don't need that one just yet. I think we're coming back into here. Minor houses deliver a house gift near advanced outpost after every uh, council. Unlocks the political agreement treaty. Unlocks the embassy buildings in the, the advanced outpost. Hmm. Not that we're going to use that. But, and then we've got spying logistics. Okay, we might go this way here. Getting the assassins and getting the agent recruitment speed uh, going even faster. We do have a benefit with that already. Um, yeah, let's go that way. Let's go and grab that one for now. And yeah, we'll just keep that one going. This one here, we get uh, each sanctuary. Again, if we can get the sanctuaries, that would be good. Now, we don't actually have any special regions at this point in time. Modular parts. This one gives us more crew in, this, in the silos, actually. I might go that way. and um, I'll just I'll, um, get rid of one. Yeah, I'll, I'll cancel that one. We'll, we'll pop this one in to start with, then come back for that one number two. Here we are. Done. Okay, so... Uh, allow them to sort of keep on building and we're now going at negative 21 but we will that will pick itself up again at some point ready for the hunt nowhere to hide we're here I'm probably going to leave these back until we, until required yeah one day until the taxes is, is I mean, we've got to we've got to spend we've got to give them 221. Now our stockpile. Yep, yeah, that's okay. Construction complete. A building in one of your villages now fully operational. So we need this spice to uh, sort of continue on. Now, again, we need 109 for that, and we're at 68 authority before we can actually take that one over. Now, this one we could make into a sanctuary once we take this one and this one, and that may be worth doing. So maybe we don't actually push this one too much. And uh, what's the benefit in here? Yeah, let's say, so there, again, more Solari coming back in from that location. Versatile, yeah, this is good as well. Well diggers, plus three water. All right, a few other things have now happened. So we now have Imperial tax has now been paid. So, um, so we've got enough to pay for the next one already, which is good. Um, new charm shares were made available to buy. Now we've got 1.7. I'm going to actually still buy these. So we want to we want to just keep on going. We're still running at 25. Let's buy another 20. It's going to chew up a lot of our money, but let's just go and do it anyway. So we've now done that one. Uh, we're now up to uh, four percent. We've got 45 shares. So we're becoming sort of like the major shareholder there and uh, hegemony threshold reached great so we're now actually hit the uh, the the point where 
we can now start to go and do other things. So this then opens up this screen in through here. We're at 5,000 hegemony. A, a single Akazi village can be turned into a garden resort. A single Akazi non-mechanical unit can be named a champion who raises hegemony by killing other faction units. Now, these do cost a bit to set up, and I don't think I've got quite enough just yet to do it. If we have a look and see, like if we go and click on this one here, for example, uh, that becomes the garden resort there. Actually, we can do it. It's only um, it's only 500, so we get plus two knowledge production per adjacent sanctuary. Um, you get plus 0.5 influence production per masterpiece in this region and its neighbours. We already have one masterpiece there, uh, which is good. And so attacking this village costs 100 land strike standing and authority. So it would sort of protect it. Now, our goal is to make this into a sanctuary. Uh, that's going to be what we're going to be trying to do uh, once we take these two locations. So with that in mind, we could actually just go and do it. Like it's... Um, yeah, we could actually go and, and just make this into the into a garden resort. Now, the backstory for the Akaz, if you didn't watch my episode zero on that, is that they come from a jungle world, and so they're very much wanting to help with making Arrakis green, and so they, they, they're into doing this sort of thing. <laughs> they're sort of the hippies of, uh, of the Dune universe. Not that I've ever... I haven't read about them in the Dune books. I did say that in episode zero, but um, they're from the prequel books, which I haven't read. Okay, so uh, we can it can only be done once. Now this one again, plus two knowledge production per adjacent sanctuary. Now we're only going to have one sanctuary adjacent to it. I think. Yeah, so I think we'll only have the one sanctuary. But attacking this village costs one hundred land strides standing. That's going to be that's going to be pretty big. I mean, I could also do it here. We don't have any masterpieces in this one. That's a tricky one, isn't it? To sort of know what to do. Um, that's a tricky one, actually. <clears throat> or would this be, no, this one here, we're not going to have any of any sanctuaries around it. Again, I don't have to do it just yet. It's 500 Solari. That would be half, that would be more than half what I've got left. Uh, the other thing we have is to make a champion unit. So I can sort of go into one of these units, for example, and now make this a champion. This is 1,000 Solari to actually be able to do that one. So we get 200 health, uh, plus two power, plus two armor. Uh, can't be, cannot be executed. Every uh, every unit from another faction killed uh, gives 100 hegemony until the champion dies. So we can do that as well. This is another unique thing that we actually have playing as the um, as the uh, as the Akaz, House Akaz. But I don't think I'll do that either just yet. But that's that's the triggers that we actually have at 5,000. So we're doing fairly well there. And that was because the spice contract was fulfilled. The next one is 24 days away. All right, let's just done pause and um, really got to wait for this one to now build up. Now, what else have we got? This one has now been investigated, so we'll resolve this one. So we just picked up a bit of a uh, bit more a uh, bit more um, tech, I think. Uh, construction completed back in through there. Now we're getting plus two Solari. So we've sort of stabilized. Now we can build another building slot. I'll do that one. And this is the last one we can build in here as well. Um, now we do actually have recruitment office and agent recruitment speed. Data center, no. Yeah, I don't think we'll worry about those so much. The wind trap, it's only it's only four here, so it's not really viable. I'm sort of tempted to go and get one of the other masterpieces. Uh, yeah, counts as two buildings for village traits. It's not destroyed on liberation. String masterpieces inflicts the loss of ten authority. Again, it just sort of it does make um, yes. Yeah, so we have to be careful of that one. Um, which way do we go? Do have four? 
A missile battery back in here would be okay. We could certainly do that. We also have the military base. Maybe we put a military base down because this is like everything that's going to be fighting around this region. Will this will actually sort of kick in around this particular region? Uh, we've got a few different things in here protecting protecting different zones and things, so that one that will actually work out fairly well. This one here, we get another another um, uh, mercenary or intel. Now our intel is pretty high already. I think I'll just maybe we do go back that way. Yeah, it's a Fremen mercenary unit. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll grab another one of those. I'll just choose that. Okay, and we go again. So let's just get rid of these while, we've, while we're doing it. The th we've done that one. That one's okay. And we've paid the Imperial tax. these guys we also had this unit down in here doing nothing let's just bring that one up towards the center Plus one Solari at the moment. Up to 85 now. Okay, so now we actually have a different aspect to the Landstride Council. We've got some things that we can actually apply for immunity from uh, if we're wanting to. Uh, again, it's a, a benefit that we actually have from one of this one here, actually. This is Elisa. So can use Landstride immunity on a resolution to become uneligible. So if there is like an Imperial audit, so uh, so the elected faction gains uh, 30 Landstride standing. Now, we definitely don't want to be immune to that one. <laughs> That's important. So we want to be winning this one. We want to be putting everything, every, all of our efforts into there. You can see there we've, we've, got, a, we've got more than enough influence at the moment. It uh, looks like the House of Treaties didn't actually use much of their influence in the last vote. Uh, this one over through here as well. So the elected faction gains minus 50% building construction costs and mining minus 50% building slot costs. So again, um, we don't want to be applying for immunity. So our leverage reputation do not appear on the ballot, but we don't want to be doing that one. So um, so that's going to cost us actually standing, which I don't want to do. So we're not going to apply for those. I don't know if it tells us that it costs us standing there. Yeah, so we get we gain the plus three Landstrat standing upon building a masterpiece. So we can sort of, the more masterpieces we do build with uh, Elisa, the better we off we are. But uh, I've got other things to build at this stage. That's sort of more mid-game. We're still in the early game. 87, 88... Ah, oh, damn it, they're taking this one. So they've so too late for that. Well, that means we can't make this into a sanctuary. Advanced outpost. Yep, is now complete. Okay, so we now actually have that other ability. So we're getting extra Solari production coming in. Damn it, we were slightly too off. Now we're not. We can actually attack them, but can we do it? See, they've got Fremen warriors at 17 power. Only three armor though. I wouldn't mind having this. Well, we can take this one out. This one is. Um, this one is worth 95, and we're basically there right now. So let's go and do this one first. But I really wanted to spice. Let's have a quick look and see what else there is around us. There's more spice over here. But that's a little way off. This is way back over here. Which means we'd have to take 
this one first, which is a hundred. Take that one, then that one. Well, let's do it because we haven't seen the others over here just yet. Now, if we take that one, we can technically, technically sort of jump from here into there as well. Either one of these would be good. 98. But I think we'll go into the middle. I think we'll go into Lamoise. So we'll leave this one here, the Plaskrete will leave. We'll go for more Solari back up in this, in, this other, uh, in this other zone. So let's just go and grab our units and move them off up that way. I'll just leave this one as a, as a fallback. Okay, we've got another unassigned agent. Now we're at level one here with the Harkonnen. So we can now see a little bit more about what's going on with the Harkonnen. So, um, I might finish this episode off actually with just going through this bit of, bit of the aspect. So it allows you to unlock information levels on House Harkonnen. So current House Harkonnen information level one. Uh, so uh, what do we end up getting? So uh, unrecon borders, all uh, production of, of recon villages, unlock uh, the infiltration cells mission. So we can actually set an infant infiltration cell. So install the infiltration cell in the village, uh, gain access to one more agent slot in the Harkonnen information if we did do that one. Only, we've only got one slot in here at the moment. Let's not worry about that one so much. Uh, we do have another agent. Now this agent is an engineer, so plastic global production is increased by 2% per information level. Um, I'm guessing that we can place that one maybe into one of the other two. Well, what do we know about House Arconan, I guess? That's the uh, that's the thing. So they've got a heap of um, of hedge. They've got 5.6. They're right close to us now. They've got 220 uh, of the uh, Landstrut standing. They've got a lot of uh, Solari in stock. They've got uh, their spice. They don't have as much spice as us. Plaskrete stocks are uh, not all as good as ours. We don't know what the manpower is just yet. Uh, they've got 16 water, so we're ahead of them there. They don't have enough, uh, they don't have much in authority, but it looks like they've just used it. Their knowledge is nine. Now ours is six. Okay, uh, the influence is they're only getting plus two, which is interesting as well. And the intel, they've got 66. So they've, they've probably been doing different missions and, and using up their intel. We haven't been using our intel yet. So, um, and we, I, think we, I don't think we've seen the, the border yet. So they've brought in Peter de Vries. So each uh, sacrificed agent permanently reduces their mission cost by 20%. And sacrificing an agent gives 500 Solari. They may have been doing that. Um, heavy hand. So villagers have plus one militia slot. So that's what they've brought in. They've brought in a Glosu Raban uh, and a Peter de Vries. Peter, Peter de Vries was the... Um, was the Mentat, sort of like the evil Mentat from the book and from the movies. And uh, Glosu Raban was one of the, uh, this is the beast. Uh, this is the nephew of, um, of Baron Harkonnen. Okay, we've got territory. They've got uh, one special region under their control and four, and four villages and um, no allied sieges. They probably won't end up with any as well, I wouldn't think. Okay, so we'll keep on going with that one. Where should we place you though? Maybe down into the Landstrad Council. Although this one here, that would be a better option actually to do that. So he'll get a little bit extra. Or oh, does he? I thought he got extra influence. He's charismatic. So influence, uh, influence global production is increased by 2% per information level. Oh, okay. So level is currently zero. So we're getting close to, uh, we're at level two with Arrakis. We are slowly sort of building up these as well, but we'll get, we'll get this to level one and that way he'll then get the boost to the influence. So we have the missions. Um, yeah, I won't worry about these just yet until we need them. All right. So we'll uh, just continue on. And we pretty much are out of time in this episode, guys. So just wait for this one to come. We'll pick up this other unit. What do you need? We're here. On it. 
Here we go. We're now getting bigger uh, raids coming in. We have to be a bit more careful. This has now got uh, demolisher units. Construction is now complete, and we're now at the full full size here at the Sandlin. Sandlin. So um, that's all okay. Got to have my militia attack before we use these. Yes, we've got Sandworm detected. Now this should. The sandworm was detected in here where our units just walked through. <laughs> so um, we're going to be avoiding that particular sandworm. Um, I don't think it'll follow us. Here we go. So we now have um, the fights now going in. I think I prefer to keep these back until I need them. Sandworm still hasn't actually activated. There's another sandworm detected. So they're following us up into this into this area. So we're getting we've by having so many of our troops walking through the sand, it's sort of activated them. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. We're still actually all right there. Um, development is now completed in modular parts. Uh, where was that one? We're now getting spot, uh, the um, the spying logistics back in th through this other side. So we can now get extra crew in the harvesters so we'll go and do that and add another crew slot in there that will then just give us more more uh, production of the spice and this one will actually have the auto recall on if that sandworm gets too close to the mining operation um, all right okay that worked out pretty well now we're up to over 100, so we can now take out this particular location. What do we have there? This is abandoned Imperial Station, 20 Solari production per research hub in the area. So we'll be wanting to grab, these are the sorts of areas that I would like to now start to uh, push into. Let's leave our, um, our uh, Fremen units behind. Well, let's let's actually leave this episode here because then we've got sort of like the next part of our expansion will then sort of kick in. We'll have a quick look with it paused at the map again. Yeah, we're seeing like there there really are they're in in through this area. This is where the Fremen actually are, so we have to be a bit careful in through there. We're not seeing any other other locations, so we can certainly expand into here before we start to have any sort of trouble with them. Uh, other things we can do in here is to start to get our research up. A little bit this is a, a special research area so I'm just going to go and grab that initially and we'll just get ourselves a research hub so this one will tell us that we get um, uh, plus one research hub limit and plus 20 percent research hub resource production so we'll just go and grab a resource hub in there as well okay that's got those done. Um, and I think we'll leave it here, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.